Hello everybody, this is a follow-up video to my video about capitalist production. If you haven't watched that one yet, click on the icon in the top right corner. So now that we've seen how capitalism is always exploitative, we should probably look at some solutions to that. The obvious answer would be to pay the workers 100% of the value they produced. In our example that means we invest 50 in the beginning with 200 after the process and hand 150 of that to the worker and the other 50 can be reinvested so the process can restart. Unfortunately it's not that easy in reality. For one we need someone to pay the initial 50 euro to start the production process. But the biggest problem is that production isn't that easy in reality. There may very well be 20 workers involved in a production and determining how much value each one added to the production can be quite tricky. And of course if 100% of the production value is given to the workers or reinvested into the production then there is no way the factory could ever expand. Which may not be a problem but all it would take for the factory to have to close down would be the machine breaking down or something as unexpected happening. Those among others are the reasons why nobody ever really demanded 100% of the profit is given directly to the people who produced it. But then how can we make a more fair system? By definition socialism is any system that gives the control over the means of production to the workers and not the employers. There are multiple ways you can do that but for the sake of time in this video we'll go over just one and it will be the one I believe is the easiest to implement. It's called workplace democracy and it works by giving the workers democratic control over the means of production. In our example that means after the production process we still pay everyone a predetermined amount of money but instead of giving all of the surplus to an employer we put it on a big pile and let the workers hold a democratic election what they want to do with it. They could choose to increase their payment or expand the factory. They could choose to hire more workers so they can work few hours while keeping the current amount of pay. Or they could not choose to invest in new machines that result in a lower workload for the workers. What they probably wouldn't choose is to buy a new machine that replaces their jobs. This model would allow the workers to have influence on what happens to the value they produce. Another advantage would be that jobs would never leave the country to make more money. Since every worker would lose their job and only the employer would make a higher profit it just wouldn't happen if the workers had any say in it. Of course there's plenty of discussion on how this would work exactly. Would the workers have to vote on every issue or would they vote for representatives? Would they elect one of them to become the boss for a set amount of time? Or would they let unions take over the leadership instead? What about term limits? All of those are important questions with different answers. Right now it's very hard to set up such a worker cooperative or worker co-op. For one because there is currently no legal framework for this. Almost every country requires one person to be responsible for a corporation rather than a group of people. And the other reason is that the working people usually don't have the money they would need. If you remember they are defined as working class because they don't have the means they need to become employers themselves. I don't want to go into the criticism too much. If you have doubts about this look up the Mondragon Corporation in Spain. It's run democratically in exactly that way and it outcompeted capitalist production for the past 70 years. And I can tell you that this would easily work from a practical standpoint. I worked in a factory for two years and there is no reason why the workers there wouldn't be able to vote on a CEO. Most of my colleagues even seemed like they enjoyed the idea of getting a say in how the workplace would be run. Of course my boss didn't appreciate me spreading socialist ideas in his factory but that's another topic. I personally think that keeping positions of leadership would be the easiest way to implement this in the short term. We could keep the old bosses and CEOs until the first election if they are good and the working people agree. They could even keep their jobs. At least until someone runs under the slogan of I will reduce the boss pay by 60% and give everyone else a raise. This isn't some theoretical academic idea either. This could be easily implemented tomorrow if we wanted to. It may even be possible with reform rather than revolution which is much easier to achieve. Of course there are problems with this. For one it keeps the power structures and anarchists wouldn't approve of that. The other thing is that it doesn't punish the capitalists that stole from the workers for decades and just lets them go with all of the stolen value. Of course those cooperatives would still use the free market to trade with each other and keep the problems inherent to that. In short worker co-ops are the best way to practically explain socialism to working people nowadays. I have yet to meet a worker that enjoys not having an say in how their workplace is run. And if you want to convince people of socialist ideas this is the best way to start off. But it's not perfect and in many ways inadequate. The most common reply I get after explaining this is that's not what socialism is. And that's because most people don't expect socialist ideas to be so practical and realistic. Most think it's some utopic ideal that ends up in Stalinist dictatorships every time. And of course thanks to Cold War propaganda we don't have a lot of good things to say about the USSR and its attempt at reaching socialism. So that's it. This is what most people mean by socialism nowadays. 
democratic control over the means of production by the workers. And that's where the not real socialism argument comes from. It's because the Soviet Union was so far removed from what many people nowadays demand and consider to be socialism. Thanks for watching. Sorry I didn't upload in like a week. School just started so I probably won't be able to upload one video a day anymore. If you want to recommend some videos by people like PragerU, Ben Shapiro or other people like that for me to react to then feel free to tell me in the comments because I'm all out of ideas. Thanks for watching. See ya.